Hey, what is going on guys? It's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS5 tutorial. So in my last video on items flow, I showed you guys how to run your PS5 game dumps. But in this video, the plan is to show you how to actually create those game dumps in the first place. So if you have a game on disc, for example, you'll be able to run the game without the disc. If the disc gets lost or damaged in future, you'll have a backup that you can run. Or if an emulator comes out for the PS5 several years down the line, you'll have a backup that you can potentially use to run in that emulator in future to preserve the game. And the same goes for any digital copies that you have. You'll be able to dump them and run them without the original license, so you, it will no longer be tied to that account. So it's pretty handy to create your own game dumps, your own game backups for your PS5 games. Now, it's not as simple as it may seem. A lot of people seem to think you can just use the dumper inside items flow. That is the plan for the long term, but short term right now, that's not possible. The items flow at the moment is only copying the game files. It does not do any decryption or anything to them, which is why people who have been trying to create game dumps by just using items flow on its own are not able to actually get those dumps working. So plan the plan with this video is to show you the entire process of what we can do right now to create these game dumps. Not all games are compatible because Slayer Scovey's decryption payload does not work on every game. Like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart cannot be decrypted right now neither can Demon Souls. So there are a handful of games right now that are not decryptable, but you'll find that out, you know, when you get to the decryption stage. So I've got a disc copy of Ghost of Tsushima here, and if I go to options and check the game version with information, I am on the base version just because it's a smaller file size, it won't take as long to dump uh, for the tutorial. But generally, you're going to want to install whatever update you, you want to be able to use. So just install whatever game update uh, that you want. And then when you create the dump, it will have that game update applied. So if you don't know how to apply game updates to your retail games, I do have a tutorial for that already, which I'll leave linked below. But uh, what you want to do is just get the game, get it updated so that it's ready to dump. OK, so the first step is to decrypt the executables and the modules for the game. That way, if it doesn't work, if you have one of the games that isn't decryptable right now, then you're not wasting time doing all of the other steps. So we'll do this one first. So first thing we need to do is launch the game because the game needs to be running in order to be able to decrypt and dump the modules and the executables. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So it is running right now. It just tells me that there's a save for a newer version of the game. So it's not going to let me go any further, but the game is running. So if I press the PS button, go to the switcher, you can see it is active. So the game is running in the background. So we're going to switch on to the home menu and then run the internet browser. And we're going to go to es7in1.site, echo stretches 7 and one host, select the PS5 option and run the idle sauce host or any of the other uh, Spectre's hosts. And then we're going to run the jailbreak. So from here, we're going to inject the dumper payload. So we need to note down the PS5's IP address right here. So 192.168.137.176 on port 9020. That's what it's listing on. Okay, so now we need to switch over to the computer and download a couple of things. We want to get SOCAT for Windows. So go to the code and download as a zip file. Of course, all the downloads will be in the description. We also want Netcat GUI version 1.2. And we're also going to want the decryption payload from Slayer's Govi, which I will also leave linked below. Okay, so first we want to open Netcat GUI and drag in the dumper payload here, slayersdumper.bin. Drag it into the program. Enter the PS5's IP address in the IP box and the port number needs to be 9020. So set that up first and then go into the SOCAT folder. So SOCAT for Windows. Right click in the folder where SOCAT.exe is and open in Terminal. And then from here we're going to type in CMD to switch to Command Prompt because it does not work through PowerShell if I remember correctly. So press Enter on that to switch to Command Prompt. And then we'll clear the screen and paste in the command that will be linked in the description, which is this command right here. You just need to replace the PS5 IP address with the actual IP address of your PS5. So we're going to pop that in there. And then last but not least, to get this working, we're just going to press enter on this command for SOCAT and then immediately inject the payload on Netcat GUI straight afterwards. So we're going to press enter on this and then inject the payload. So we press enter and then inject payload and then we get a successfully connected from local address. And now it's starting the data transfer. And it may get stuck on this for a while, but eventually you should start seeing a bunch of data being transferred. Okay, there we go. You can see it's now transferring. So it was stuck there for a few minutes, but it's now going. 
Once it says exiting with status zero, that means it is finished. So we can close out of this now, close out of netcat GUI. And if you go back into the SOCAT folder, you'll see that we now have this ra.tar file in here. If you open that up, go into the MNT folder, the sandbox folder, PFS mount, and then we have the actual app folder right here. If you extract this out to your desktop, this will contain your decrypted executable and modules. So we've got our eboot.bin here. We've got our modules, which is libc and our write.sprx. You may have more modules and more executables in here for your game, but that is it done. Now, if you have a message that says something like eboot failed, if it says any of these failed, then unfortunately you probably have one of the games that's not decryptable right now with this decryption payload. Uh, which is unfortunate, or if the files have no file size, if they're all zero bytes, then that also means that it has failed to decrypt them. But if that's not the case, if you have it like this, where they have proper file sizes and it doesn't say that any of them failed, then you should be good. You should have all of your executables and modules successfully decrypted. So all we need to do now is get the game files. Now what we want to do is install items flow and also grab a USB drive that's large enough to fit the size of the game on it. We go to our USB drive. I've got one here that's got 232 gigs free, which is plenty of space. The USB needs to be formatted in XFAT format. So the file system needs to be XFAT. Make sure you reformat it if it's in any other format. And we're going to copy the items flow package in here. You can grab items flow from, of course, the homebrew store from pkg-zone.com on your computer. You can just go to it here and download the PS5 version, or you can grab it from the homebrew store app itself on the PS5. So from here, we can go ahead and eject this and plug it into our PS5. So when the decryption payload finished, it will give us this not enough free system memory error. So we can just go back and refresh the page and run the jailbreak again because this time we need to run the ETA hen payload. Okay, then we're gonna run the ETA hen payload. Okay, there we go, so ETA hen is up and running. Okay, so once you get that message, we can press the PS button to exit. If we're gonna head over to settings, we're gonna go down to the debug settings, which should now be enabled after running ETA hen. We can go to game, we can click okay to this message and go to package installer and install items flow. And then it says ready to play, so I can press the PS button and play it. App has been granted a jailbreak and here we go so you can support lightning mods via the link there on ko-fi i'm sure he'd appreciate it but uh, anyway we've got ghost of tsushima right here so we're going to select it and we're going to select the option to dump it to dump it to the usb now you can dump all or just the base game or just the patch we're going to dump all even though we only have the base game installed we're just going to select the dump all option if you do have a game update installed you're also going to want to do the dump all option as well so we're going to select that option here and that's going to run the game. So there we go. Game is now running and you can see it's now starting to dump the game. So dumping base game. And then it will give you progress updates every six seconds uh, on the progress. And it dumps fairly quickly. As you can see, we're already past 1%. So we're just going to wait until it finishes dumping the entire game over to the USB. Okay, so that took quite a while, but once you stop getting those messages every six seconds, that should mean that it is finished. So we can go ahead and close out of the game now. We'll head back over here and close the game. And then we'll unplug our USB and plug it back into our computer. Okay, so back on the computer here, we can get rid of this package now. So here we have the actual game dump itself. So PPSA 03208. If we go in here, we've got our eboot.bin and our modules and everything else, but these are all encrypted these modules are encrypted so this prx file and of course this one here is also encrypted the way that you can tell if it's actually decrypted or not is you can open up in a hex editor so if we use hxd i'll leave a link to this in the description if we copy the eboot.bin inside you can see this one is encrypted so it's not decrypted the executable in items flow you've got the .l file is showing up further down here and then if we take the one that we got from our decryption payload that we ran initially, and we take this eboot and throw it in, you can see how different it is. It actually starts with the .elf file right here. So this one is encrypted and this one is decrypted. So what we want to do is replace all of the encrypted files on our game dump on the USB with the decrypted ones we got from Slayer's Govee's dumping payload. So here we have the game dump and here we have our decrypted modules. 
So we want to replace the eboot.bin right here, replace file and destination. And then we'll also take the SCE system and SCE modules folder and merge those in with the game files here, replace files and destination. So the last step we need to do is fake sign these files. Now to re-sign the files, we can use the make f self script. Now this is a originally was made by Flats, but Lightning Mods has updated the script to fix, I think, a few issues and also update it to use the latest versions of Python instead of Python 2. So that will be linked in the description along with the make f self script and remove f self script by echo stretch. So I'll leave those both down in the video description together. You can go ahead and download it. You'll get both of these files. So you want to make sure that you have Python installed in order to run this. So I've got Python version 3.11 installed right here. So make sure you go ahead and install that if you don't already have it. So now we just copy the two files, the Python script and the bat script into the game dump location and double click the bat file to run the script. And you can see here it is actually fake signing the files. So the libc write.sprx and the eboot.bin. So that is now done. Now, if you get an error message that says something about the word Python not being a recognized command, if you get that message, it's probably because you installed Python through the Python installer on the website instead of installing it from the Microsoft Store, in which case you'll need to edit the bat script here by right-clicking and selecting the edit option to edit it in Notepad. And then from there, you can change the word Python here to py instead and then save it and then try and run the bat script again and it should work this time. So if we refresh, we can get rid of the bat script and the Python script and we now have the fake signed version as well as a backup of the decrypted version, which is the ES back file. So the script also creates a backup file of the original module. So this is the backup that will still be, you know, the decrypted one. So if we open this up in HXD, you can see this one is still decrypted. But the new one that it's made here is the fake signed version. So it has re-signed the file. And that means it should be playable now uh, via items flow. Now we can just leave those in the game dump folder because there might be some other method of running these dumps in future through some kind of fake package method or through an emulator in future. In which case you might need those original decrypted files. Um, but for running them in items flow, we need the fake signed version. So once you've done that, your dump should now be playable or at least runnable. Obviously, different games have certain issues when trying to run them using this method. Not all games are playable, but at least now you have a version that you can try and load and see if it actually works. So let's go ahead and give this a try now. We'll eject the drive and plug it into our PS5 and see if we can get it loaded. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete my save file real quick because we were getting that issue where it was saying, hey, there's a save file that already exists for a newer version. So I couldn't actually like progress in the game and get further on. So we'll go ahead and delete the saves for Ghost of Tsushima. I just need to do that because I went from being on a higher update to the base version. So uh, you wouldn't have to worry about that. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and eject the game here as well. So we'll eject the disk and delete the game for the disk version. Okay, so that's gone. All right, so now we're going to go back on items flow and add our game dump version here. Let's see if we can't get it running. Okay, so we'll go to PS5 app, change app path, and we'll press R1 to switch to the right menu for our USB stick. There's the dump right there, PPSA 03208. We'll press square to select it. And there we go, game change successfully and launch. So when you launch your game dump for the first time, you'll get this message that says launching and then the game title. And this will be stuck on here for quite some time. It could take several minutes before it actually launches. It's copying a bunch of files from the dump to the hard drive, not the entire thing, but just uh, the SCE system folder, the contents of that get copied over to the hard drive so it can create the virtual app. So that needs to happen first of all, but once that's done, the second time you launch it and any other time you launch the game thereafter, it should just launch instantly. It's only on the first launch that you may be stuck on here for quite some time. So just give it a few minutes until it actually starts to load the game. Okay, so now it launches, you get that universal data registration error thing. That's normal with these dumps. And this something went wrong. We get a couple of messages here. This is just something that happens with Ghost of Tsushima. But once you click OK, you can see the game actually launches. 
So there we go. We've got a working game dump of our game. So our disc game is now running without the original disc, as you can see right here. Got it all loaded. Now, it is normal to run into some problems with these dumps. It is early days, so a lot of games just don't work right now. So you might be able to get a, you know, a quote unquote working dump where it's able to launch, but then it has some other error that pops up while it's trying to launch the game or certain things don't work in the game, or you can't get past like the main menu or like a sign-in screen or something like that. So this is why we have the compatibility list to show you get a good idea of what games are playable, what games have issues that might require a few patches to get them working, and which games just do not run whatsoever, uh, can't even launch. So that's really, you know, what it's all about here. So you can see we've got the, the base version here. We'll just go ahead and get into the game, make sure it's all loaded. Yeah, so the base version just like if you don't have a save it just launches you straight into the into the cutscene so yeah anyway as you can see game is running here if we exit out to the home menu we've got it now showing up as the uh, flow game or full game or whatever you want to whatever acronym you want to use for that but we've got the game showing up here the game dump and we can now launch it so so that's pretty much it that's how you can create your own ps5 game dumps of your physical games or your digital games and get them running without the original disc or license file uh, so that you have a working backup that you can you can use in future if anything ever happens to your retail copy you'll have a backup you could use it to run in a, an emulator in future and any of that kind of stuff so yeah obviously this will hopefully get easier in future lightning mods is intending to add proper decryption into items flow so that it can do the entire thing for you decrypt the executables and dump the game files and basically create a working dump straight from items flow uh, which would be good that would be the the kind of ultimate solution but obviously right now because we have issues with the decryption payloads there are quite a few steps involved unfortunately we have to decrypt the executables first then dump the game files then fake sign the executables and the modules in order to be able to get a playable dump but in future it should get easier so anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.